YouTubers and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. Today I am looking at the robots from the Robots of Death. That's both SV7 and D84, well, the dumb bots. Uh, why am I reviewing them both together? They're practically the same figure, except for a few minor things, so I thought it would be easier just to do them all at once. So I'll start with SV7, seeing as he is the simpler figure out of all of them. Now, a bit of backstory on these figures. They were originally going to come out together as a two-pack. So you would have had D84 and SV7 together, much in the same way as with the Autons um, and things like that. It didn't end up happening, I think, because of cost reasons or something. So they released it separately. I'll give you a quick rundown of the articulation. The head can turn like that. I'm not sure if we can do a 360. Mine's still very stiff. The arms can't really do a 360 because of the rubber of the top. You have 360 degree articulation at the biceps, articulation at the elbows, and the hands can also do a 360. Articulation at the hips, at the waist, that can do a 360. You have articulation at the thigh, which is very stiff. Can't really do much at all. And then you have it at the shin as well. That can do a 360. And you also have it at the knee. So it's your standard articulation. The sort of stuff you normally get on a figure. Very good for, for posability and everything. Now let's take a look at the details. Well. I'll go on record and say that I absolutely love Robots of Death. One of my favourites. So to actually have the robots form Robots of Death is fantastic. It's a brilliant design. So the details. Well, the head is excellent. It's a perfect recreation of the original masks worn. I mean, the face is all very good and all the, the various colours. Very subtle, the silvers amongst the sort of metallic green. But very nice and... All the details on the hair. So it's all very good. Then you have the top, which is made completely from rubber, which enables you to have flexibility for the articulation of the figure. This is very nice, very textured um, through the sculpting, and has SV7 printed on the on the front and then you have the the black strips down the sides to just to show that he's a higher up robot the arms have bands on each arm also has a communications device if you were wondering what that was yeah they used to talk into that like that the hands are, well, they're just sort of normal hands, but they've been sculpted to look as if they are gloved. As you can see, there's lots of wrinkles in the fabric and everything. Something that's very nice is the trousers. Because they're made of rubber as well, which allows you to have the sort of effect of the fabric bending. It's not a lot, it's not like very obvious, but it's a nice touch. And again, the trousers have all been very textured and have the bands and everything and the f legs here you can see all the sort of the, the bands and everything over the top of the fabric and the the silver blocks and it's very nice it's a very nice very nice figure now I'll just very quickly talk about this the figure in some images if you go on the internet and search for images of this figure, you will see it's mainly prototype images actually. It has a additional hand. Now the idea was that this hand was to be uh, detachable. It isn't, so don't try it. It was going to be detachable, and it would be the same hand again would come with it, but it would have a corpse marker in the palm because he was in charge of handing out these corpse markers to the to the Vox and that was the original idea that this figure would come with that and everyone was 
under the assumption that that would be the case. In fact, even some of the sculptors at Character uh, Design Works Windsor who make these figures thought that was the case. But the figures didn't come with it. Not sure if it was dropped for cost reasons. Perhaps they're holding the, the corpse marker hands back for the Vok robot that's meant to be coming out in Wave 2. Not sure. So that's SV7. Now we'll look at D84. Now, I shan't go through all the articulation, because as I said, it's the same. It's basically the same base figure, except for a few differences, which I'll very quickly touch upon. I bring SV7 over here. So, the bands are different around the sides. Just one thick black line, as opposed to the smaller lines here. The colour's obviously different. Then you have the, the arms are also different. As you can see, there's only one band on either arm and no communications device because dumb robots can't talk. That's what the D stands for. SV is Super Voc and D is for dumb, if you haven't seen the story. So, as I said, it's basically the same figure. The head sculpt is exactly the same. It's just a repaint. So. It's a very dark green with just silver outlines. The costume itself is a very sort of dark grey, practically black. And that's about it. The the bits here are the same colour, the same shade of green as the head, much in the same way that on SV7, the shade of green here is the same as his face there. Now, here's something that I'll point out, and I'll put my other dumb robot with it. As you can see, each dumb has different decals on its chest. D84, D33. Now the figure is packaged as D84. The reason being is because he's the most important of the dumb robots. Now people have asked me, oh, did I sort of do these myself? No. The figures actually do come with them. Now a lot of people have thrown these out. So I'm going to pre-warn you, in case you haven't got your hands on this figure. At the bottom of the box, each dumb robot comes with one of these. A very tiny piece of paper. It's very small. And on there are four stickers. So you have D64, D33, D88, and D84. And you can swap them around. Well, I think you can. I haven't actually really tried. I've just stuck one down and thought, no, I'm not going to fiddle around with it. But that's the idea, that you have interchangeable decorations. They're very fiddly to get on, though, so I wouldn't advise trying to pull them off and stick them back on. So be very careful about this, because it's not obviously packaged. It's just shoved in the bottom of the box. And I've known that people have got the figure and just displayed it and had no idea that this came with it so make sure that you look out for this because this is rather important now the figure also comes with an accessory which is this now this piece is this small sort of cylindrical bit is actually a communications device which the doctor then fiddles around with it gets the head of a destroyed Vok robot and has a fiddle with. Now, the accessory is very good. You have, the, well, the face is obviously just your normal Vok sculpt, but with a big crack down the side, like in the episode, but it's inside the head. A really impressive thing. Just look at all the fine details you have. You've got all these different wires, all these bits and pieces of circuitry. If you don't have these figures, get them. They're brilliant. They're very nice, they're very cool robots, and if you haven't seen the story, go out and buy it on DVD. Excellent story. One of the best. So, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time with a review of Magnus Greel and Mr. Sin from another excellent story, The Talons of Wing Chiang.